Hey guys, welcome back. Check out this short video. Best line I've ever heard in my life. Sometimes when you're in a dark place, you think you've been buried, but actually you've been planted. All right, Kirby. This one is deep. I like this one because whenever you are in that dark place, it seems like there's no light. You, you know, you shoot, you've you've seen me in those dark places where I'm calling you and I'm like, I told you I feel like I'm on crack. And, you know, I don't know what's going on. And, you know, you really don't know what the next step is because I think you're so focused on just hitting that end goal and you're not just focused on just taking that step, you know, that one step at a time. And you know, eventually you will see growth from completing whatever you're going through, you know, getting through it, taking those steps and just getting to the end. But you have to take those first steps because that's all you can see in front of you. You can't see ahead of you. And uh, I like this. Yeah. I like this quote. I've never heard this before, but it was a great way that great way that he put it. Yeah, it's. First off, the quote was insane, insane. And it's insane when you hear it because. Most people has been there. I mean, I know for me, I was there for about two hard years, you know, and then it was other times, it was other times I was just in that spot temporarily, but especially when I got out of the military, I was in that place. I was buried wasn't the word. I thought, I thought I got cremated, ashes spread in the ocean. It was no coming back. And the thing that it do is it makes it takes a lot of self-reflection when you're in that buried state and the thing is is how you get out i should say better i should say it is you need to do a lot of self-reflection when you're in that state you need to look at how you got here you know what you need to do to get out of there um i remember when i'm transferring doing credit card transfers i I move in uh, car payments. Uh, you know, I couldn't afford the car payment, so I would call the bank and ask them, could I move it to the end of the uh, payment cycle just to give me some more breathing room? That I'm applying to 20, 30 jobs a day, but nobody's calling back. And it was, it was hard. It was hard. And the thing that started getting me out of it was more self-reflection. It was... You know, I was blaming everybody for my conditions. It was everybody but me. And then what the time where I hit my, you know, eureka moment or I hit my a moment where things started to change was when I looked in the mirror and I said, the reason why you're here is because of you, the decisions you made. I mean, the all the money for me, all the money I had, I was always thinking about, oh, let me go hurry up and make a quick flip. You know, I got two hundred dollars to make it four hundred dollars, four hundred dollars to make it eight hundred dollars, and then even if I got it up to that amount of money, I didn't do the right thing with it. I would say, all right, I get greedy and then say, let's eighteen to sixteen and trying to go, you know, play poker and be feel like be junior, and then next thing you know, it's back at zero. So I put myself in that condition. I I chose to get out of the military and not knowing the economic climate because I just believe that. Oh, I was so tired of the military and the civilian world would be so much better for me. It was decisions that I made. It wasn't decisions that, that, hey, somebody put me here. Somebody didn't come, come out and say, hey, Kirby, I want that guy Kirby broke for the rest of his life. So put him in a bad situation. It was everything that I did. And most people don't come to grips with that. They're in the situation they're in because of them. But that's when I hit my eureka moment and saying, hey, it's me. I have to change me. I have to learn what to do to get out of there. And contrary to proper belief, it's people that's been in that same situation that's willing to give the advice and the mentorship and give the nuances of how to navigate those situations. For me, it was Dave Ramsey. Uh, and, you know, listen to his story and then going through his steps and getting me out of there. That's what, that's what happened. But I went from, now, I understand I went from the military making 30000 a year, but I was living, keeping my head above water to going to negative, a negative number. And then now, after doing a lot of self-reflection and pounding through the grind, getting planted and growing, you know, to a to a new a new plant, a new uh, tree. Now, the numbers that I made in the military, I couldn't even I couldn't even pay for my grocery bill with it. 
So that's that that is a big thing that I see a lot. But Alex, go ahead before I run down the rabbit trail on this one. No, I just I think this is a great quote. I mean it it hits deep and especially, you know, when you first start out like trying to start something different, a different venture, people aren't gonna be supporting you in any way. And so you're gonna be left alone, you're gonna be left in the dark. You're not gonna have any sight or way to navigate what you're doing. So having those people, those mentors, like you say, whether it's content creators, whether it's, you know, thinning your circle and having friends that are just driven and focused on the same path as you. And going back to that quote that, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs say where you don't want to be the smartest one in the room. If you have someone that is smarter than you, that can guide you, you just have to take action. You don't have to be the one that comes up with the idea that comes up with the the solution. You just have to be the one to hear information and execute on the information. And so if you have the right group of circle or that right group or that right circle surrounding you and you can just take their information and follow what they're laid, what they've already laid out, their blueprint that's already created, then you can see success from it. But you know, in the beginning, if you don't have those contacts, which I think is also like you say too, you know, your network is your net worth. If you don't have contacts and you're completely left in the dark and you have no way to actually receive that information, you're going to be in the dark. But if you have the right people around you, then you, I, I think that it goes to what he says, you'd be planted. Yeah, a, a quick story. And this just happened recently. Um, somebody I know, I'm not saying for I'm not saying that they're friends or anything like that, but somebody I know they called and it said that they quit their job. And of course, I'm not the first person they call to tell nothing crazy like that. They call everybody else and then they call me and then they call and say what happened. You know, they quit their job. And the first thing they ready for me to come back with, wait, why you do that? Everybody want to know the who, what, where, why, and how. So they call me and they, they expected me to berate them and all that. Only thing I said was, okay, that's done. You did that. And then they wanted to explain. I was like, it don't matter. You quit. I was like, so now you have to get focused, get on the grind. I was like, it's going to suck. I was like, I know you think that because you had the position, somebody's going to easy hire you. Don't expect that to happen. What you expect to do, and you look at yourself and say, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to keep trying every day. So a week pass, no hits on a new job. So you can tell when you're talking to them, they're getting down in the dumps. Only thing, as you know, Alex, my motto is execute. execute. If you don't do nothing, just execute. Don't think, don't do nothing. So if you got to get up and go to the library, if you got to get up and go apply to 100 jobs a day, do it and just keep executing. So now two weeks pass, nothing. Now you could tell mentally they are getting drained. You can see they're, they're in depression mode. They... You know, they in a what was me mode. And I just said, okay, now you, you tried the traditional way. Now you got to go do something extreme. You got to go outside of the landscape that you know. And then they said, what do you mean? I said, I know you've been applying online. Now it's time to get your resume up there. And then now you start walking in there, putting it in people's hands. You ain't about to leave it up to the algorithm of, of the internet world, of the, you know, the indies, the career builders, all that. You're going to go in there and physically talk to people, look them in the eye and hand them your resume and say, hey, this is me and I'm here to work and I can be here every day to execute to make your business better. And then so, of course, they was hesitant, but then they went with the plan. And then they happened to call me yesterday and say, oh, I got a job. That's it. But and then they told me after the fact is she's like, they was like, you know what? Every time I call somebody, family members, friends, only thing they wanted to do is play the sob story. They wanted to say, yeah, you know, they gave me an excuse to say it was okay for what I did. You was the only one talking about me. You was the only one that said, okay, it's, it's done. What's the next step? Let's go grind and go get it. Grind and go get it is going to make it happen. Even though you feel like you're in a dark place, if you wake up and execute every day, when you feel buried, you will be planted. And if you grind and execute every day, you will grow to a new tree and produce new fruit. That's exactly how it is. So let me say, guys, if you liked the video, hit the like button, leave us a comment down below, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.